What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another boss guide video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you guys exactly what you need to know on the Death Stalker, going over his mechanics and attacks, and what approach you guys should be doing to go ahead and kill him pretty efficiently. Now, before we get into the video, I want to say if you guys do find the video, uh, you know, helpful and the information useful, if you guys could consider hitting that like and subscribe button, that is currently the best way to support me, and it really lets me know you guys are enjoying these videos. All right, so let's get straight into the video. So the first thing I want to tell you guys is the boss is a toxic attribute. So go ahead and try to stack some toxic resistance as well as defense and HP. This is going to allow you to survive longer in the fight and allow you to take more hits without needing, you know, to get like one shot in and constantly revived by your teammates. Now, on top of that, the weak points for the boss is he's going to have a front core and a back core that you can go ahead and pop off and then attack the main part, just like any other boss. Um, and then, you know, you can go ahead and really get those nice juicy weak point hits if you go ahead and just fully destroy those front and back core pieces. He also has a sensor um, on the left and right side of his face that you can go ahead and shoot off. And then he has balancers on the bottom of the boss as well. Um, kind of like little feet, little legs that you can go ahead and destroy. But beyond that, there's really not too many other spots that you can shoot for weak points. Now you can grab the front and back core, but it is pretty hard to grab the back core because he has this piece on his back that blocks it, um, just a part of his hitbox. So it's pretty hard to actually consistently grab it. And I found myself spending way too much time trying to do this. So in my opinion, just ignore grabbing that back core piece and just focus on DPS and the boss. It's just gonna be better because it's way too inconsistent and you can't reliably pull that piece off. Now let's go into the attacks of the boss and stuff like that. So he doesn't have too many attacks you need to worry about. And he does have a few though. The first one is just this normal attack where he's gonna shoot you know, these uh, projectiles at you with like a gun and stuff like that. These will do damage. They're not too insane on DPS, but you know, if you're very squishy and you don't really have a tank build with like a good amount of defense, resist and HP and stuff like that, I would try to go ahead and get behind uh, a piece of cover to just go ahead and make sure that shot tanks it. But if you do have some decent amount of defenses, you just go ahead and tank that. Don't, you don't have to have to worry about it. Especially if you have a Eugen in your group like we did, you're able to heal and, and really get rid of those debuffs that the boss puts on. Absolutely amazing. And you can kind of go through and just eat all those and not really have to worry. The next thing that the boss does is she will shoot out these like floating skulls, like these fire green skulls that will come at you. Now they have your max health. So if enough hits you, you will uh, take a lot of damage and you will be down to pretty much no HP. So whenever that actually comes and she shoots them out at you, I will go ahead and try to prioritize killing those and then go back to DPS and because they will follow and home in on you. So something to, you know, go ahead and try to destroy first and then go back to DPS. And so this way you don't have to worry about it. Now beyond the floating skulls and just like the range shooting, she does periodically shoot out this ring that you kind of have to either jump over or she'll shoot out a ring like kind of on head level to where if you do jump, you'll get hit. So you just want to stay on the floor. So you just kind of, you know, recognize if it's going to be the jump one or the one where you just stay on the ground. And depending on the elevation she's at too, this could change obviously. But beyond the ring and the flying skulls and just her normal basic attack, that's pretty much all she has. So you're just going to go on and DPS her and eventually you're going to fill up her rage bar where she will go into her rage mechanic. From here, she will spawn totems around the map, about five of them. Um, and these totems, you have to find uh, one that is fully closed. There's going to be four other ones that are open, and these are false totems. If you go into it, they do a good amount of damage to your character, and they will pulse every few seconds that you're inside of their like AOE range. Now, like I said, you want to find the one that's fully closed. From there, that one won't do any damage to you, and you can run inside of it. Now, you'll see a ring appear once you go near the totem. And this will slowly fill up. So you just kind of sit there uh, and, and dodge some of the attacks that she'll do and just fill the ring up. And then once it's fully filled up, the totem will break and you can DPS the boss again. Now, do keep in mind, though, when you're filling up this totem, she will shoot different skulls at you as well as the normal homing skulls. Um, you also have the kingfishers that will come and attack you. And she'll also now start to shoot these, like I said, these different skulls at you that will spawn these green rings that you have to jump over and dodge and stuff like that they do a good amount of damage so obviously you want to avoid those um but beyond that the only other thing she'll do is she'll randomly choose one of you to basically shoot a like basically shoot this orbital shot at you that'll come from above you'll see this green aoe appear on your character and eventually it'll stop following you and once it starts following you just run out of the aoe it'll land and you'll be good to go so beyond that, the skulls that spawn the green rings, the normal homing skulls, and obviously just the normal ads that follow and try to knock you out of the circle and, and, and hit you. 
that's pretty much it. There's nothing really too specific about it. Just make sure you find that totem that is closed. Uh, go ahead and capture the ring. You can go back to DPS and the boss. From here, basically, the only other thing that she does do is she'll spawn these clocks. Now, I'm not really too 100% sure what the clocks do. My group's best guess is that it prolongs the time that she will go in her one-shot mechanic. Um, but beyond that, we really don't know 100% on what it does. So if you guys do, please let me know in the comment section below. But that's it for the boss, those mechanics. She's pretty easy, like I said, once you actually get down to go and capture in that totem that is fully closed. You can go in, kill her pretty efficiently and consistently past that point there's not really too much to her definitely a lot easier than i thought she was going to be and that's pretty much sums up the whole boss in a whole i hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys do enjoy it and find the information useful if you guys could consider hitting that like and subscribe button i will graciously appreciate it it definitely lets me know you guys enjoy these videos and currently that is the best way to support me if you do wish to do so I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night depending on watching this video and i will see you guys in the next one peace